Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Airbrushing for the Beginners, Metal Effect, Rivets and I'm giving you one more today as well. We're going to do applying graphics. Handy thing to learn, applying vinyl graphics for spraying, so we're doing that. So I'll run through the bits on the table if you wanted to follow along with this and I'll give you some other options to get round things in a minute when I tell you what we're doing. Now, first off we'll start with the board that we're going to be using is aluminium. Now if you've been following the channel and you've been doing some of my step-by-steps, you've been working on paper. So you're getting used to paper and your brush on paper. When you move across to this, it's a different ball game because you're going down on a very smooth, flat, shiny surface and your paint will react differently going down to something like this than going to down to something like paper that's absorbent. So aluminium dye bond in today's video, guys. Nice off-cut piece. You can get this on eBay and Amazon. Just type in dye bond, sign board, hoarding board. It's basically a composite board with aluminium pressed either side to a black dense foam in the center. Three to four mil thick. I think you can get it up to about five, I think. Powder coated both sides. So you've got a matte side and you've got a gloss side. You can work on either. It doesn't matter because we've got to key the surface up and you get to see that a little bit, bit later on. So that's the substrate we're using. Graphic you can get from your sign shops or if you've got a plotter cutter you can cut your own. So a nice simple one. Graphic, inch masking tape for the graphic. Sign writer's squeegee. If you don't own one of these, cheap on Amazon and eBay, really cheap. Or you can use a credit card, it'll do the job. I've got another shield. This is the fourth one in my set. So we're gonna use this one today, give it a test run. Perfect for the rivets, so that. Paint. I'm using a solvent base coat. Now this is where you can go another option if you've not got access to a spray gun that will put it down a little bit more evenly. You can use an aerosol can, silver metallic, you can use that. Spray it outside, respirator. Think of your health always when it comes to spraying solvent type paints and things. So you can use an aerosol can for this, but if you've got access or you own a Creos PS2 9 tech that's the one I'm going to be putting the base coat down with because it's got a fan cap. It's got the fan cap like you would get out of like the fan cap in an aerosol. It'll put a smaller pass down of about two inches. So it'd be nice for this panel just to base up and get a nice even coat of silver. But you can get the same effect with an aerosol can if you've not got something like that or a bigger spray gun. Airbrush for details. I've not picked up an expensive detail brush. We're going budget cheap as this is airbrushing for beginners. So we've got the Galleria GHAD 98 Joule on a 038. So we're gonna use that, be absolutely fine for putting the rivets down, textures and things in this video today. So that's the brushes. Other paints I'm using FW inks, it'll be absolutely fine over the solvent base. Drop some of the FW inks down and then if you finish this today, this would be ready for clear coat. So you can clear coat it, which is an absolute bonus. So if you wanted to hang this piece on your wall, you could put a couple of coats of clear over it, either 2K clear coat out of an aerosol can, or if you've got access to a bigger compressor, the PS2 9 tech would put it down. Now, all you've got to do is thin your 2K clear coat out, but the 290 will do that size panel. You do a few passes, you'll be going up, going up small passes to cover it, but it will cope with it. So we could clear it after if need be, but this will just be showing you the stages of getting it up to clear coat. So that's what you can do. So they're the bits. We're gonna do this in stages. So we're gonna start off with the prep side of things, cleaning it, prepping it up, and then we'll move on to the next stage, which is gonna be base coats, then the logo, textures, rivets. So there's a load that's gonna be happening. So stick around and I'll see you in the first step right guys the first thing that we've got to do is prep this panel up because you can't paint straight onto this panel if you did the paint would go down but then eventually the paint will peel off because it's not keyed up so the first thing i'm going to do is wipe this down and clean it with a wax and grease remover this one's a one in a five liter can a little bit on a microfiber rag and just give it a wipe over first like that. That will evaporate off there. So that's your first bit of cleaning done. 
then scuff the surface up. So what you're aiming to do is you're aiming to take all that shininess out the panel, just to dull it back. So you've gone from a gloss to a matte finish. Like that. So that's scratch that up. Then go back in with your wax and grease remover and just give that another wipe down. Like that. Give that a wipe down. Dry it off with a bit of kitchen towel. Now that panel is good for spraying. So now you can lay that down on some paper. We've got the, we've got the paint mixed up and we'll just do a nice coat on this and get this base, based up. Right, I've got the extractor running. We've got the PS290. And that's the sort of fan pattern we're getting. That's more than good enough for this. So just some light passes. Like that, let's dry that down. That's the first coat down. Just let that flash off with a bit of air. And we'll just do another coat over that. Like that, and that's your panel base coated up. Just check the light, you can just see a few little stripes coming on there. You can go back in. Back off slightly. And just do another coat. that and just fill in dust over it till you get an even coat if you had a normal airbrush doing this you would really stripe it up but this has got a little bit wider fan on it just build the coats over until you get it nice and even like that nice silver even panel right guys so your panel is nice and dry. If it's liney, don't worry. If you've done it with your normal airbrush like that and you've got lines over it, don't matter. Because now you're going to be adding textures to it to go over the top. Now, the first colour I'm going to be using is my Golden Eye Flow and it's, it's shading grey. And we're going to do a pass of this sort of get a feel of it. Just gonna drop some lines on this and get some paint down. Probably can hardly see that. So what we'll do is we'll drop a couple of, drop of drops of black in that mix. We're gonna darken it off. Like that, we're just gonna do a line pass, like misting some paint over. Like that. You can see how like, rough that's gone down. We've got some spitting on on there as well. Drop that on. Then grab your Scotch Bright. So grab your Scotch Bright. Just have a little test that I'll do. It's drying off nice. And then just scratch through it. Like that. And 
and you can take this straight back to the silver. We're going to add some more. Like that. Then we'll hit that again. Shading grey, bit of black. I want this pale to look sort of worn and sort of beaten up a bit. Give me some paint. You can always whiz over it with a hair dryer. Just dry it down slightly. Right there, back in with your Scotch Bright. Just do the lines through it again. This will bring the silver back. Like that. So that's made it look more beaten up. I think with different camera angles, that looks quite dark where it is at the minute on camera. But when the light changes on it, you will get that different sort of look. So we've gone with that color. Now what I want to do is I want to drop some, let me get a bit of sepia. I'm just gonna, Patch in some light patches of some sepia. And just tint around the image. see if you just weather it up a bit. We're going to go with a bit of burnt umber next. Some little bits dotted over here and there. Like that. Dry it off. And you only need like a mild warm on there, on the low setting. More than good enough just to dry then. Acrylic down the inks over the top, just dry it down. I'm going back in with some black. Just give that a little blast through. Little back bubble with it. Well, I've not got a test panel to design, I'm just testing my paint, just blowing it into the waste pot just to get the paint to come through. Clean that out. Back him with a bit of black. I'm just gonna just, gonna just tip some of the edges with the black. Mm. 
like that and just fog some of these edges in. Give it a little bit of a bit more sort of distressing. off because you can use that as a texture come away from it just little textures like that So now what we can do, and we can go in and we can start these rivets around the outside. We're going to add more bits to this. That's just the sort of first pass on that. So I'm going to go in with a cool grey for a start. Shield, pick yourself a circle, we'll go for the small one, and just go to completely fill it in like that. And do some down here. Like that. So you're just creating white dots, well look like white dots. Now people have done, you can do sort of rivets like that, where you can just put the dots in. We'll do a couple along here. And another one there. So we've got the rivets going all the way around the panel, like that. So you've gone for a white dot for a start. Let's give that a little dry down. Now what you want to do is you want to give that sort of a 3D look. So we're going to go for, get this paint cleaned out. You go for a dark colour over the top and hold the shield back up. In fact, I might drop a bit of Payne's grey in this. So you're going to hold the shield back over the top of the white and you're going to sort of shade round it. Round the edges. And more to the bottom like that. So you're going round the bottom, a little bit on the bottom. and a bit round the edge. Round the bottom, and just a dusting over. Round the bottom, just a dust over. Like that, 
You're just basically just tinting it down. Around the bottom, and just to pass around the top. Like that. So that's sort of like your next tone. Now we're going to go for a FW. black I'm going with the black back over the first one and now you're just going to tint the bottom around the bottom We're aiming for this as though the light source is at the top. So a little bit at the bottom. Like that. can do this if, you, if your free hand is good you can go in free hand without the shield and just darken that off around the bottom Now that's give it that look at that little bit more 3D look where you've got the silhouette to the bottom, the dark, and then the top's just a little bit lighter. Now what we can do is we can go in with the shield, find the one that covers that circle up, and then drop shadow the bottom of that. You're just holding the shadow over that, covering it up and just doing a drop shadow to the bottom. So that's the first pass on that. It's probably hard to see on camera. <coughs> You've got a little bit of black. We can go back over <coughs> to the darker black later. Because that's, that's the ink black that's very thin. Right, we can go back in with the cool grey and just pop the tops out now. with a cool grey again. Just that top edge. Like that. Just 
Just over that little bit of top edge. Like that. So that's just popped the whole license off. So that's made them pop forward again. Then get yourself a black Posca. So a black Posca pen, and then you want a a circle dot like that in the center. Try and keep them sort of even. These are the sort of pot rivets that I'm sort of used to using the pot rivet guns where you keep squeezing it and then the, the rod part of it snaps off and leaves this. You see this look of the rivet. So do that in the center. So that's give it the next look. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in with some, get this brush clean out, I'm going to go in with some of the golden black because it's a lot more darker than the ink because my ink's really thin now. Just clean this brush out. Bit of the golden black. I'm just going to go in now and just really separate this off. Just darken that bottom a bit more. Get that a little bit more separation. Do a little bit more shading. Drop a little bit more shading over them. like that. Then what we need to do is get a scalpel or if you've got a Posca, I think a scalpel is better because you'll get that real sharp edge. I'll just grab a, where that little black dot is. You want to do a little half moon inside it at the bottom of it and scratch back to the aluminium underneath. You'll go straight back to the white. And what this is doing is it's giving that next look of a hole in the center. It's just making it just stand out that little bit more, making it a little bit more realistic. Like that. Just at the bottoms. Then. Like 
and that makes that hole look like it's going in and it's got somewhere it's going. Now you've got the little highlight at the end of it. Now you can do a little highlight scratch at the top here. Right on the edge of that. Right on the edge of the rivet at the top. Very light one. Like that, and that just makes that top piece separate from that. Go back in with the cool grey in the airbrush, and just put then do a light highlight on the top. Just on the top edge. Little bright highlight. Like that, so they really stand out now. Then you can go back in with your Posca and just darken off again. Them centers and then they really pop now, look. That really looks like it's got a proper three-dimensional hole in the center and that, and that's what you'd see on like the pot rivets that you see like in the UK, like the main ones that I've seen of these, where you see the little hole in the middle. Like that. And that gives you that realistic look of a pot rivet then. Right, so that's them done. That's what I mean by they're nice and simple, just go round like that. Now if you wanted to age them up, you can always go back in like the burnt umber. Drop a bit of burnt umber in and just come away from them and just drop them. A couple of like runs of rust coming down. Like that. We can go back and with some black in a minute. Give them a little bit of tint of brown just slightly over them. Just age them up a bit. Like that. That'll do. Now if you've done black on here like this, you can do this as well. Go to the bottom edge of your... and do that. Just on the bottom edges and follow where the black's going. That'll make it look like that's a crack in there just by scratching back little bits. Just makes it look like it's going inwards, like it did with the centres of the rivets. That so makes it more look like a hole. Same here, you can just scratch into that and just Make it look like it's been ripped away. So that's that bit. Rivets down, that's done, nice and quick. 
We will move on to the graphic in the center. So you've got your graphic like that. And you would usually get this, you get this on the back part of the graphic is silicon paper. And what that does is that peels away to leave you your graphic sticky side here and that would peel away. Now ways you can put this down, you can put a graphic in like this and then you could pin, You what you usually do is usually pin masking tape, I'll just show you. You pin masking tape left and right, you would do that and then what you do if you wanted to centralise that to the panel because it's been done in a weed box, you would measure your distances here and here, centralize it, and then you'd go left and right, up and down to get your level going like this. But I'm just gonna smash this one down on an angle. So pin it like that. Now, there's ways you can fit it as well. You could put a piece all the way along, like that. Or you could put a piece through the center and you would peel the silicon paper away at the back. So if that was down the center, you would peel this way, you'd peel the silicon paper off like that, slice that, and then you would, on this side, you'd have squeegee this down, lift the other end up, and then peel this away and squeegee down. But if you've got a graphic this sort of size, you just peel the backing off so it's like that. And you can literally do that with your finger. Just wipe one way, wipe the other way. Like that. That's good enough. And when you peel away, this is a very low tack vinyl under here. Like that. You can save that piece and reuse it just to mask a bit off of what you're doing. We'll get some masking tape. Like that. I'm just gonna pin that to make it so it's like a little well. Like that. will stop your overspray going over your panel just because it can just contain it that little bit better. Like that. That'll do. And now you're good to spray whatever colour you want. Now I'm just going to go for, for a start, I'm going to go for some cool grey. We'll just do a light logo, just a simple one colour might go for two. Just pull that through. And just build this up nice and light. Like that. a little dry down with a bit of heat. Just dry that off, just flash it off. If you're using acrylic inks, you will need to do this. Just give that a little dry off. And then I might drop a little bit of just a little bit of wicked red over that, over the top. Just over the top. Not gonna go too dark on it.
It's a nice, simple, easy one to follow along with, guys. Dead easy. You get a good effect at the end of it. So if you're doing this on a gas tank, along with some artwork as well, blending a bit of artwork in with it, it'll look really cool. Like that. Let's just give that a dry off. Demask, get yourself a scalpel, go up to the edge very lightly, pick the corner like that. Just lift your corners up and just put your finger over it and just pull up like that. And there we go. Simple panel, done. We've got a bit of weathering. We've dropped the realistic rivets round and then just dropped a standard simple logo to the center and got it down. So you can do that simple effect. You can add more of the scratches. You can go different ways with the scratches. I've just kept them sort of one way. Added a bit of sepia, added a bit of burnt umber. Gray, you go round, do the pass on them. Go back in and you can just start to tweak things up, make them sharper. Just go in like that. And when panels are done like this, they always look better when they're clear coated because this is silver under here, metallic. The minute you put clear coat on it, that's when the colours pop and the depths go into the blank when they gloss up. So there you go guys, a nice simple one to practice, but you get that sort of realistic look with it and a nice and easy way about it. We used a couple of colors. We've used a gray scotch bite to put a bit of texture in over the silver. We use the shield to do the rivets, we go around, do a pass of the light gray, and then you're going underneath to just give it that shape. Do a drop shadow, do the black dot in the center, and then get your scalpel and do a very small highlight to the bottom of the black circles, depending on which way your light source is coming in. If it's coming in at this angle this way, you'd put that highlight to that side. If it was coming sort of face on or down from the top, you'd go to the bottom of it. So just looking at where your light source is coming in is how you'll get this sort of 3D look and make them look that little bit more realistic. Great one to do on motorcycle tanks, anything like that, if you wanna do some aging, just a simple one like that. And then we drop the logo in to the center. That's how you'd put a graphic down, spray on it, just mask off your outer area. We did that little pocket around it just to stop a bit of the overspray. And that's the panel complete. And all you can do now is drop a bit of clear coat on it. And that is when you'll see more of the effect come out because then you'll see your metallic base coat shine up and then all your other colors will darken off it'll just really pop on your panel. So I hope you've enjoyed the video on this little step-by-step -step on metal and rivets and dropping the logo down. Drop your comments, tell me your thoughts, like, shares, it all helps the channel guys, and I'll see you lot in the next one. Thanks for watching.